This video is sponsored by ShiftScreen. So the M1 iPad Pro is a ridiculously powerful device, but can you use it as your main computer? Let's ramble. Hey, what's up, guys? It's great to see you all again. And if you're new here, I'm Patrick, and this is where I ramble about tech and other stuff. So these last couple of weeks have been all about the new iPad mini. It was the big surprise of the September Apple event, and it kind of even overshadowed the iPhone 13, if you ask me. Anyway, we've been talking about the smallest tablet in the lineup for two weeks straight now. And to be totally honest with you, I haven't really touched my iPad Pro very much since the iPad mini 6 is just so convenient. I've been taking it with me everywhere. And its big brother is feeling a little neglected. And all of this has really made me reevaluate how I use my devices. I mean, if the iPad mini is the tablet I'm gonna be taking pretty much everywhere, then where does that leave the iPad Pro? Where does that fit in? I mean, I got the 16 gigs M1 iPad Pro not too long ago, and that thing is not cheap. So I either use it or I sell it. So the way I'm thinking about it right now is I have my iPhone 13 Pro, it's in my pocket all the time, I use it to make calls, send messages, snap some pictures on the go, and even shoot some videos. And of course, I'll use it to quickly look something up, but when I'm traveling or I'm in bed or on the couch, I wanna consume some content, I wanna watch some YouTube or Netflix or play some games, I want that bigger screen. But the 12.9 inch iPad Pro is a big jump from the iPhone and it's quite heavy, so I'm not gonna be holding that for a very long time. So that is where the iPad mini fits in. But the mini doesn't feel great when I wanna do some real work. If I wanna type a bunch of emails or do any real multitasking, I'm not doing that on the iPad mini. I mean, technically you could multitask, it runs iPad OS 15, so the option is there, but it feels way too cramped. So the mini to me is not a work tablet. And that in my opinion is where the iPad Pro still Still really shines. I mean, it is technically a computer and a really powerful one at that with some significant limitations, which we'll get to in a minute, and also a very interesting solution, which we'll also get to in a minute. But there's no denying that the iPad Pro is a hardware beast. It has, of course, the crazy powerful M1 chip, the same one we also find inside the newest Mac computers. It has 16 gigs of RAM, which is also insane for a tablet. It has that beautiful 12.9 inch liquid retina XDR display with 120 Hertz ProMotion and either one or two terabytes of storage. And it has a Thunderbolt port. If all of that doesn't scream pro, I don't know what does. It has all of the hardware to make it a full-blown computer. But as we said earlier, there are some limitations that make it, well, not a computer iPad OS 15 is still not the mature operating system that we were all hoping it to be. There are no real pro apps yet like Final Cut Pro or Logic, and there is no real external monitor support. And that last part really has me irritated. When Apple announced the iPad Pro and told us we were getting an actual Thunderbolt port on these iPads, I really thought that now, finally, we will get full external monitor support as well. I figured that if they're gonna put 16 gigs and the Thunderbolt port inside that tablet, that might just be the hybrid device we were all hoping for. I was dreaming of work days where I could just take notes on my iPad using my Apple Pencil during meetings, slap it onto the Magic Keyboard and do some real work on my commute. And then when I get home, I'll just plug it right into my crispy ultra wide monitor and continue working on the big screen using a keyboard and a mouse setup. That to me was the perfect scenario. Of course, we now know that it didn't quite turn out that way, but that doesn't mean the iPad can't be used as a pro device, as a desktop machine. So let's have a look at how well it performs when it's hooked up to a proper desk setup. And then I'll show you a really cool way to make that experience much more like working on an actual computer. So like I said, this iPad has a Thunderbolt port. Now the monitor I'm using is not a Thunderbolt monitor, but it does connect via USB-C. And of course the Thunderbolt port on the iPad Pro is backwards compatible compatible with the USB-C port on the monitor, so that will work just fine. You can leave it inside the Magic Keyboard case and use it like that, but that kind of defeats the purpose of a desktop setup for me. So for this use case, I prefer to hook it up to an external Bluetooth keyboard and mouse, which is super easy. You just go into the Bluetooth menu, make your devices discoverable, pair, and you're done. You now have an external keyboard and a mouse. And since I will not be using the Magic Keyboard, I prefer putting the iPad on a nice stand a bit higher off the desk 
I recently got sent this really nice looking one called the Magflot. I really love it. it. Kind of makes the iPad look like a miniature iMac. I'll be covering this stand in much more detail in the next iPad accessories video. So if you're interested in that, make sure to hit that subscribe button and click the little bell so you know when that's up. Right, so now we have everything in place and we are ready to hook up the iPad to the screen. But what you'll immediately see is those hideous black bars that kind of ruin the experience. You can do everything you can if you would use the iPad on the Magic Keyboard, especially when you use a Magic Trackpad, which kind of emulates all the gestures, which is kind of useful, but it still feels cramped because of the horrible aspect ratio. And that is where today's sponsor, Shift Screen, comes in. They reached out to me last year to test their product, and we did a really fun little experiment where we used Shift Screen to hook up an iPhone 12 to a monitor and use that as a computer. You can go check that video out if you want. I'll link to it at the end. But since we did that video, Shift Screen has come a long way. This app is no gimmick. It is a very powerful tool that helps create a real desktop experience for the iPad Pro in areas where iPad OS is really lacking. So as you can see, everything looks kind of crappy until we open up Shift Screen and boom, the entire interface changes and we have no more black bars. This looks like an actual computer desktop. So let me take you through some of its features, which I'm sure you will like. First of all, this desktop experience is highly customizable. You can adjust the look and the feel of the desktop by changing the accent color and the background. You can even choose your own wallpaper from your iPad's gallery. You can adjust the cursor size and the speed. And here you will also see that this is in fact an actual cursor and not the rounded pointer we see in iPad OS. All right, so that's nice. It looks like a desktop. Now what? Well, if we tap in the bottom right corner, you will see an app drawer appear where you can open apps just like on iPad OS, but with one huge difference. These will open up in actual floating windows, not split view, not slide over, actual floating windows that you can move around the screen, place them wherever you want. You can even resize them the way you like, just like an actual computer, just like you would on a Mac, basically. And that shows that this is 100% possible. It can be done. Apple just doesn't want to. But we do, and that's why I'm happy that there are developers out there that produce some awesome apps like this one. So we can use our devices in these cool ways. So let me show you an example. Let's say I want to open up the browser, which by the way is their own native browser, and a page in Notion so I can take notes and maybe I also want to watch a YouTube video in the meantime. You can totally do that, no problem. Just open up a new browser window and you're good to go. But what's really cool is that the browser actually lets you use the video as a floating window. So now you can just put it on top of your other windows and keep rolling. Or maybe you don't use Notion, but you prefer Google Docs. That's here as well, and it looks fantastic. You can start a video call using Google as well, and, and it has a calculator. Why Apple still hasn't added one to the iPad is beyond me. But hey, at least when we're using shift screen, it is there for us to use. Now let's go back to the video call option for a sec. And we'll show you another really cool advantage of using the iPad in this setup. So let's start a video call really quick. And as you can see, it uses the front facing camera of the iPad, but it shows the image on the monitor. Now, because it shows the image on the external display, we don't need the display on the iPad Pro, and that means we can actually turn the iPad around, switch the cameras on the app, and bam, you can now use the much better cameras on the back of the iPad. You can still see everything on your monitor, except you look way better with this nice crispy image. So this is an actual workspace, an actual desktop experience that I can sit down and work with easily for several hours and get some real productive work done. Obviously, no app is perfect and there's always room for improvement, but this new version of Shift Screen feels pretty darn good. And the developers are constantly adding new apps to use in this full screen multitasking setup, so I can definitely recommend this. And yes, they agreed to sponsor the video, but I'm not gonna recommend anything that I don't genuinely like. I liked Shift Screen when we did the little experiment with the iPhone last year, and I like it even more now. Definitely give it a try. It's well worth a couple of bucks in the App Store. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, please give it one of these. It really does help the channel. Subscribe for more content. I upload about twice a week, sometimes a bit more. Plenty of fresh content coming your way. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.